Good morning, everybody. We are about to begin this morning's Mass, and this morning is rather special. I will not be concelebrating, but four young men um, will be leading the Mass this morning, and um, that is Father Hugh, who you all know from, from the parish. He usually says the 12 o'clock with me. And then there will be Father Joseph Shoni Barry, who is from Nigeria and who has worked here and everybody knows, and his family are here today. And then there is Father Tonachu and his lovely sister Elena is here today as well. And then there will be Monsignor Bishop, right, Athero, and he will be here as well. And he's working in Mexico. Father Joseph is working in Cuba. Um, Father Donachu is working in Madrid. He's in charge of the money. We have to look after him. So uh, we welcome you all. And afterwards, I invite you all to go upstairs, meet the priests, and we have a lovely finger buffet, sandwiches, everything, all ready upstairs, I think. Isn't that right, Hansen? Yes? <laughs> Okay, they're busy working on it still. So uh, enjoy the Mass and, and, and the special celebration of 25 years of priesthood. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As Father Gerald said, four of us today are celebrating 25 years of ordination to the priesthood. We were ordained in different dates in different places but we've decided to celebrate together, have several celebrations together, to thank God for the blessings of 25 years serving the Lord. So as Father Joe said, um, Father Monsignor Javier, the bishop in Mexico, Father Tonatiu, he's the provincial bursa, and Father Hugh, whom you well know, is hiding there. And <laughs> um, those who don't know, he suffers from Parkinson's, so he's on the move. Uh, so sometimes he may need to leave. We thank God for our service. We are called by the Lord to give our lives for his people. And we are indebted to you when you accompany us when you pray for us, when you support us, that's what helps us serve better. So in this Mass on the 17th Sunday, when we think of God's
generosity towards us. Let us acknowledge as we begin that we are all sinners. We are earthenware vessels, as St. Paul says, who hold a treasure and conscious that we are weak and frail and sometimes we say things we don't want mean to say, we think things we don't mean to think and we act sometimes contrary to our faith. Let us ask God for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ, have Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way so as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing Elisha, the man of God, bread from the first fruits, 20 barley loaves and fresh grain in the ear. Give it to the people to eat, Elisha said. But his servant replied, how can I serve this to a hundred men? Give it to the people to eat, he insisted, for the Lord says this, they will eat and have some left over. 
He served them. They ate and had some over, as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. The response is, you open wide your hand, O Lord, and grant our desires. All your creatures shall thank you, O Lord, and your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your might, O God. The eyes of all creatures look to you, and you give them their food in due time. You open wide your hand, grant the desires of all who live. The Lord is just in all his ways and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him, who call on him from their hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. I, the prisoner in the Lord, implore you to lead a life worthy of your vocation. Bear with one another charitably in complete selflessness, gentleness, and patience. Do all you can to Preserve the unity of the spirit by the peace that binds you together. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were all called into one and the same hope when you were called. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God who is father of all through all and within all. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. great prophet has appeared amongst us. God has visited his people. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went off to the other side of the Sea of Galilee or of Tiberias, and a large crowd followed him, impressed by the signs he gave by curing the sick. Jesus climbed the hillside and sat down there with his disciples. It was shortly before the Jewish feast of Passover. Looking up, Jesus saw the crowd approaching and said to Philip, where can we buy some bread for these people to eat? He only said this to test Philip. He himself knew exactly what he was going to do. Philip answered, 200 denarii would only buy enough to give them a small piece each. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother said, there is a small boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what is that between so many? Jesus said to them, make the people sit down. There was plenty of grass there, and as many as 5,000 men sat down. Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, gave them out to all who were sitting ready. He then did the same with the fish giving out as much as was wanted. 
When they had eaten enough, he said to the disciples, pick up the pieces left over so that nothing gets wasted. So they picked them up and filled 12 hampers with scraps left over from the meal of five barley loaves. The people seeing this sign that he had given said, this really is the prophet who has come into the world. Jesus, who could see they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, escaped back to the hills by himself. The Gospel of the Lord. You open wide your hand, O Lord, and grant our desires. That's what we said as our responsorial psalm. In the first reading, we heard the prophet Elisha made there be more bread than was imagined. And the end, they, they will eat and have some left. He served them, they ate, and had some left over. And in the gospel, we hear how they ate from the five barley loaves and two fish with lots left over. So it expresses the abundant mercy of God, the generosity of God beyond human imagination. You open wide your hands, O Lord, and grant our desires. The psalm continues saying, all your creatures shall thank you, O Lord, and your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your might, O Lord. That's what we four are here today to repeat. Thank the Lord for his goodness to us for 25 years as priest. God, in his generosity, called an, a pharmacist who was working as a pharmacist, Father Hugh. He called a trained lawyer, Tonatiu. He called a teenage Spanish boy, who is now a bishop. And he called a young adult, myself. He called an Irishman, a Mexican, a Spaniard, and myself a Nigerian to serve him from different works of life. God is generous in the people he calls. God knows what he wants from everybody. We are not clones. and it reflects his creative power. So he called these four people from different, at different ages, different works of life, to serve him. We were ordained in 1999, 31st of July, Bishop, um, 18th of September, Father Tony Tew, and Father Hugh and myself in Kensal, Newtown, in the 9th of October, 1999. A few people here in the congregation were present. And at the ordination, at all the ordinations, there is a promise that we make before the consecration, that is to be in communion with the church, to celebrate faithfully the mysteries, to preach the word, and to consecrate our lives to the Lord. In those, in these 25 years, um, the bishop has served in hospitals in Mexico, in schools also in Mexico and 
has been lead, had leadership roles among us, the Augustina Recollects, and almost two years ago was ordained bishop in Mexico. So a Spanish priest who became bishop in Mexico. Father Tonatiu worked in the colleges in Mexico, served parish life in the United States, and is now, as Father Joe said, in charge of the money of, the, of our province. Father Hugh served in a parish in Kent's New Town, Ivy Bridge, English Martyrs, that we celebrated yesterday, and also serving as a testimony of how to live illness in a spiritual way. He's an example of how to live um, what for most people might just break them, to leave it still serving as a priest. And I have served here in, in England. I was in Wembley Park, served down in Devon, served in Sierra Leone, in Brazil, and now I'm in Cuba. In all those years, we probably celebrated Mass more than I was just uh, like sometimes do figures, 9,000 times each of us. And in those years, we've said we've helped people, obviously. We've touched lives that we may know, may not know. But importantly, people have touched our lives. And I'm convinced that um, people care for us more than we could ever imagine and forgive our follies more than we deserve. So God is good. God is generous in his calling. God is kind in the way he accompanies us, leads us along the way to serve him each day better. And probably what most characterizes us as priests is the Mass. So we've said with the people thousands of times, may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We've said thousands of times, the gospel of the Lord, that is, God speaking to his people. We've said thousands of times before the consecration in private, when we wash our hands, Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Because the church invites us priests to say that so that we know that we are not worthy to hold the bread and pray that it becomes the body of Christ. We are not worthy to hold the chalice of wine and say, repeating the words of our Lord, and it becomes his blood. As I mature in priesthood, I'm clearer every day that God is so good. Why would he come in his great infinite majesty to be in the bread through the invocation of a frail human mortal and that bread becomes the body of the Lord? through the, con the words said when he takes over the, the person, the priest prays in the person of Christ, that wine becomes his blood. The infinite comes to, through the finite. We've said thousands of times, the body of Christ. 
to people who have come and said, Amen, I believe. I believe that Christ wants to come into my life and make me a better person. We have given the bread of life to people, even though we know we are unworthy. We have been agents of God opening his hands. Oh, you open wide your hands, O oh Lord, and grant our desires. The, the God who is generous, maybe the, the opposite of the word open wide is the clenched fist. We, we, we identify a clenched fist with someone who's stingy, angry, resentful. And God is, has an open hand, generous, kind, feeds those who need his life in them. It's been a privilege participating in the journey of people. Sometimes maybe priesthood gets bad press. Bad press, sometimes deserved the bad press. And maybe sometimes people think erroneously, you know, feel pity for priests. But I have and I'm sure the experience of my classmates is you're privileged to be in all moments of people's lives. The birth, the joyful moments, the, the baptisms, the marriages, and in the time when they need a kind word, a, a kind gesture, the sacrament, the, the, the anointing when they're sick, to be there, to be when, when people have passed on this life, to be in all moments of people's life is a great privilege. To be ministers of how God opens wide his hands in generosity to each and every one of us. I will end with them. Um, I sort of keep some, I kept um, our ordination on the 9th of October, our booklet. And in our booklet, I will end with these words. We put, Father Hugh and I, this phrase on the first page. Priesthood is not a career. Priesthood is not designed to provide us with a comfortable livelihood. Priesthood is not a reward for any achievement of ours. It is a service. Our Lord said that he came not to be served, but to serve. Those are the words of Cardinal Basil Hume. I commend ourselves to your prayers. Pray for us that we will continue to be faithful ministers of his. Let us stand to profess our faith to declare our confidence in God. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things were made, to us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the Holy Spirit who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God's love has no limits. Let us bring to God the needs of humanity. We pray for the church that it may be a source of spiritual nourishment for all who seek meaning in life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the gift of priesthood which the Lord bestowed on Father Hugh and Father Joseph 25 years ago, and Father John 51 years ago. We pray for all priests and ask the Lord to give them strength to continue their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who hunger because of war and other disturbances, that they may receive support without delay. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, look with kindness on our broken world in which there's so much suffering. May God, our merciful Father, give wisdom to those in Ukraine and Middle East who are trying to sustain, protect, and build peace through negotiations and diplomacy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick and faced with pain, suffering, and loneliness. May they be strengthened by the support of their friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the dead. May their hunger for eternal life be satisfied in the presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask Our Lady, our Holy Mother, to be with us in our prayer as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. We now pray in silence for our own private intentions. Father, your son fed the hungry multitude. May we imitate him and reach out generously to all who are in need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our communion hymn is number 359. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together. Let us drink wine 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which bring from which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things whom you send as our Savior and our Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make a most and eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an intact tax with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Santa Monica, Augustine, and Nicholas of Tolentine, and with all the saints, who, on whose constant intercession in your presence we are like one and pale and May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially our brother Rene Arithmendis Lozano, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind and visits to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow in the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Amen. 
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter on the night. But only say the word and my soul shall be there.
Take me, Lord, use my life in the way you wish to do. Fill me, Lord, touch my heart till it always thinks of you. Take me now as I am. This is all I can offer. Here today, by the clay will be molded by my Lord. Take me, Lord, use my life in the way you wish to. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated, Father Joe. There are no newsletters. Would you believe it? This morning I put it into the machine and it said, call the engineer. And I said, no problem. The engineer is Hansen, right? He'll fix it for me. 
but Hansen is busy taking photographs and was up all morning making sandwiches upstairs, which you will all come and partake of after the Mass. And there's just one or two little announcements. Tomorrow night we continue our prayer workshop in the parish in the Philip Howard room. And uh, the young adults will be meeting next Saturday uh, on the 3rd of August. And they're going to visit the Imperial War Museum. And in the afternoon, they're going to visit and be taken around St. George's Cathedral. And then there'll be refreshments later on. If any of you would like to join them, and when it's a young adults, the range is, well, as long as you're over 95, under 95 and can walk, you're more than welcome. And it gives me great joy, great joy um, for our, to celebrate today. Um, they had a plan. They said, oh, we'll come and on Saturday we'll say a quick mass and we'll go. And I said, no, you will not, because I'm so proud of you. I want you to come, and I want our parishioners to see the great work that the Augustinian recollects are doing throughout the world, in Cuba, in Mexico, in Madrid, looking after the money, in Madrid, and, of course, here in Wembley. And uh, I was... Uh, I knew them before they were ordained, all of them, and they were wonderful young men, and they continue to be wonderful middle-aged men now, perhaps, but it, it's a great joy for me to be here today to celebrate with them. But they might have great jobs in that, but I'm not a bit jealous, because when I was a young man of 17, I had the most important job in the order. I looked after, cleaned, and fed the pigs. That was my job. One day, I went to the prior. I was about 18. And one day, I went to the prior, and I said to the prior, for the prior, could I have some oil for my wheelbarrow? And the prior being Spanish, of course, is, why you need oil for your wheelbarrow? And I said, when I push it, it makes a funny noise. And the prior said, what funny noise it makes your wheelbarrow? I said, well, when I push it, it goes, ee, 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 ee. And the prior said, this minute, go to the church and say one rosary as a penance. I said, but why? You lazy boy, your wheelbarrow, it should go. <laughs> so I'll hand you over finally for the blessing. We've known Father Gerald when he was a middle-aged man. <laughs> and he's faithfully told a joke every time. <laughs> I say he's the greenest priest ever because the jokes are well recycled year after year. Um, thank you for sharing with us um, Father Hugh's brother has come from, from Ireland. He was at our ordination. Father Tonatiu's sister is here from Mexico. And my sisters and brothers from, and nephews and nieces are here from London. And also their friends and my friends and are here. So just to thank you for taking the time to share this um, important day. Every celebration is an act of thanksgiving to God. We also remember today, um, for one of us, we were five ordained actually that year. Um, one of us um, passed away quite suddenly, about uh, five years ago, five, six. About si six years ago, January, he, 
He passed away suddenly. Rene, as the person who Father Hugh remembered at the, the Eucharistic prayer. So he was one of us, but he passed away. So we pray from heaven he'll be interceding for us who journey along this life. Um, so just to thank you, and as Father Jez said at the beginning, after Mass, there's a um, little finger buffet upstairs if anybody wanted to, to share with us that moment. The Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen. I ask my fellow consultants to give the blessing. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Our final hymn is number 268. How lovely on the mountains of